at this uh, lava here again, you will notice that the lava has a lot of lot of holes in it. See that? Now those holes are due to the fact that the water was bubbling. And since it was bubbling, it obviously uh, would make it very lightweight. Now, how do you get lava rock? Uh, of course, if you live near a volcano, you happen to be living in the Sonoran Desert area in Mexico, or southern uh, Arizona, New Mexico. If you're near anywhere there's a volcano or an ancient volcano, then of course you would simply know that uh, you're in a volcanic area and you start looking for something rock, certain rocks. You remember this one, don't you? <laughs> you remember good old George here? Yeah, sure, let's not forget. If you want to get in contact with me, at uh, email, I'm American Online, which means, of course, you type it the way it is here for just email. And if you want to see my website, then you type the, the third line there, which says Members American Online. You get a free website when you work with American Online, in case you don't know that. Of course, I had one of those computer wizards, a uh, young gentleman who came out and developed my website for me because it was quite a thing to put together. But we now have the website. All right. Now, volcanic rocks, where do you get them? You know the easiest place to get one? Go to your neighborhood nursery. And they sell something called feather rock. These are not heavy. These are feather light. So these are called feather rock. Now there are imitations. Uh, you just have to make sure there's a lot of holes in it. And maybe the guy will tell you if it's real or not because you haven't maybe learned how to tell the difference. But um, another place you can get it, you can buy a whole bag of it. If you have charcoal grills, you can buy lava rocks to put in your charcoal grill, and that's real. That's stuff. So the next time you have a cookout, if you happen to have one, and they're going to use lava rocks, ask your dad if you could have, can I have one little one? Remember, it has to be little to fit in that box, so then it fill up your whole closet. And you start off your collection with that. Now, there is one very famous little rock. Famous. I know that's a good word. Popular rock. That's a better one. Here we have a rock that's obsidian. And the pebbles really are obvious. In other words, you can really spot the pebbles. And this is one everybody buys. They just don't want to buy obsidian. What they're really after is what we call snowflake obsidian. See, look at that. Snowflake. Those are pebbles that got stuck in the obsidian. Isn't that clever? That is very popular. You can find these at all the nature stores and things like that. They always sell snowflake obsidian. So what is it? It's obsidian, but with pebbles in it. And by the way, obsidian comes in different colors. And that has to do with where the rock has been found. Now, this is not a very big rock, but uh, by, do you remember the, uh, there, there's one there. Start with that one, that little brown one. Now, that's obsidian or volcanic, and it's brown in color, and that's called jasper. So what? Oh, jasper can be made into stone, you know, for rings. You can take a black volcanic rock and put it into a ring. Now we have this, remember the green one we had? I was going to, there, there's the green one. That green one, the one that has the white dot on the bottom, I showed you how to please mark your collections, remember? Please mark them. So if you drop them or gets lost in your collection of who's who. The green, well, that's a form of jade. For those of you living around the uh, Montana and just the Canadian area, they have Canadian jade. Oh, yeah, it's not the greatest quality, but it's good. You could use it for jewelry. If you want some real good jade, though, you have to have someone who's overseas and the um, Southeast Asia and the Pacific, and uh, maybe you can email or write a letter to someone here, a pen pal, and have them send you a little piece of jade. Jade is found in various places around the world, but you see, if it's good quality, and then, of course, the price goes up. But you don't need the, the quality. You need something to put into your collection. You have to have all examples of these kind of different rocks. All right. Have you ever, look at this, have you ever seen anything like that before? Look at that. Look at this. This is called Make Your Own. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but I wanted to bring it out now so I don't forget to mention it. You can buy your own way of making your own crystals or making your own rock. This is a man-made rock. You add water and do the whole thing, you know. And anyway, you come up with this. I just thought it let you look like because 
I've had a lot of parents who bought it and they never came out with these results. <laughs> it never <laughs> seems to work sometimes. All they have is a nice jar of colored water <laughs> with like sand on the bottom. But I don't mean to be rude, but uh, there are certain tricks to growing your own crystals. But anyway, that's what one looks like. I happen to have it here, so I wanted to show it to you. Okay. Now, you don't want to use this hammer on the next family of the rocks, and that's sedimentary. Sedimentary, or sedimentary rocks, are rocks that are formed layer upon layer. And if you use something like this, you're really going to smash it, because a lot of your sedimentary rocks uh, that are interesting to, to collect are like gypsums and calcium and calcite, and those are very, uh, what do you call it? Very, they're not very hard. I can't get the word. In other words, their their uh, hardness scale is way down in two and three, so they're very very brittle. The best example of sedimentary rocks that everybody can find except for certain parts of the United States, but it's everywhere, and that's coal. Yeah. They tell us it's made of dead plants and animals, they say. But that can be uh, put into a fire and burned. And if you burn it, of course, you get heat from it. You're releasing the old rotten wood and the energy that's in there. Now, what's neat about that is that if you let this sit in the ground long enough, you can have it form into, now there's actually a little shell there, you can have it form into a limestone formation. In other words, it's still a sedimentary, but it's starting to go through a little bit of change. And then you can get up to something called oil shale. Certain places, uh, this happens to be coming from Indiana, but uh, oil shale can be found in the Kentucky area, if you live in that area. Uh, you've seen it. It's exactly flat like that. You just grab a hold of it and you pour it right out of the, the rock face, right of the cliff or whatever. So we have coal, oil shale, and then we have one more. Something that's not popular anymore. Years and years ago, this is called slate. Slate would used to be for chalkboard. You, know, you could write on that. Kids slate their notepad. And also they use it for the roofs on buildings. That's where some of this came from. My wife had an uncle who had a uh, barn, I think it was. It had slate on the roof, and he was taking it off to replace it with real modern-day stuff. And therefore, I got a whole bunch of this slate material. Now, what's exciting about oil shale is what you can find. If you know someplace that there is oil shale or... Uh, slate material, mainly oil shale, and something, uh, limestones and sandstones. This is what's neat about this. Now, that doesn't look like much. But you've got to remember, every time you find a rock, please turn it over, twist it any way you can. See that little white circle sort of thing surrounding a little fossil? Yeah, a fossil. It's called a trilobite. The poor old guy, he's buried in this mud. And there's little uh, Chinese seashells kind of family. And see, that's what's that. You know, you can just find it in that. On this one, oil shale. See it? Very brittle. But look, when I turn it over, see it here at the top? So this is a fossil print. A leaf print. Okay, now we have the word Petusky stone. This is awesome. Really neat. Petusky stone. This is a coral formation. Those of you who live down in Florida, you know all about coral. I mean, every time you turn around, you got coral in your backyard and your front yard. Well, this is coral rock 